we need to talk about chaos because I have been playing a bunch of Final Fantasy Origin, also known as Stranger of Paradise, and honestly, I feel very conflicted about it. Part of this game is extremely fun, and part of it is just so very, very bad, but I want to try and parse that out. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and this is my Brutally Honest Review. Now please, if you could, like this video, let's see if we can get it to 5,000 likes, and subscribe if you haven't already. But now, let's start to really dissect what's going on. You see, part of the reason I'm so conflicted about this project is because I am a very, very big fan of Final Fantasy. I've played all the games, I've beaten the mainline stuff, the weird spinoffs, the MMOs, I like this franchise, but also, I like Dark Souls. Stranger of Paradise is trying to combine those two ideas, making something that is very savagely difficult if you want it to be, but also sort of rebooting the Final Fantasy universe. You see, Stranger of Paradise is sort of a rough retelling of Final Fantasy 1, following the Heroes of Light, but this time, instead of just going up and punching the bad guy, it's more about a chaotic dungeon crawling experience that can be played alone or co-op. Now let's begin by talking about the gameplay, because this is definitely where the game shines the most. This is developed by the people that made Neo, which if you played that, it's basically the fastest, craziest samurai game you've ever experienced. Stranger of Paradise is very, very quick, allowing you to constantly switch between jobs, magic, classes, and honestly, land some pretty hefty combos. But how does it work? Well, basically, this game is just 16 major missions. You tell Teleport from dungeon to dungeon, there's a little bit of cutscenes, and you go straight back into the action. You'll essentially be told by like a king or some townspeople to go and explore a nearby crypt that has some evil beasties inside it, or a pirate king, or sometimes just a dark elf lord. And by slaying them, you get a bunch of experience points, a bunch of loot, and a bunch of very good times. This game is extremely swift. When you're actually playing this game, it's based on this class system where you can be things like a ninja, a marauder, a paladin, or somebody like a white mage or a dark mage that can sling some very hefty magic. But the way this works is that whenever you're playing it, instead of your character himself leveling up or your party members getting direct experience points, your jobs level up. Now, during the course of this, you can equip any two jobs at once. These are basically just different classes that determine the special abilities and the weapons you can wield. You're not going to be like having swords and crazy heavy just two-handers while you're trying to sling magic typically, but you can do that if you become something like a battle mage spec. But here's what's interesting about it. While you're playing this game, you keep getting a chance to land some very, very hefty combos that stagger people. All the enemies have a health meter and a break meter. If you manage to put them off balance enough, Jack the hero can just instantly crystallize and shatter them. So basically, while you're in these fights, you have to try and determine, do I want to use slower, heavier attacks that can stagger people, or quick attacks that may just do things like whittle down their health bit by bit? Now, for a lot of the early enemies, this isn't just as vital, because honestly, they just don't have a lot of health. They're not that difficult. They're not doing that much damage. But later foes, especially some of the more crazy-ending dungeons, it helps to be able to stagger and shatter people as fast as you can. Now, the reason this is so cool is because as you're leveling up and getting experience points, you get a chance to customize your class, choosing whether you want to have more potency, more attack power, more defense, or new hero classes. At the bottom of a lot of these skill trees, you get a chance to select which new hero class you want to unlock. So if you really specialize in bashing people apart, maybe you unlock a samurai spec or a dark knight or something that's really going to change the nature of gameplay, and what's fascinating about this is that since you can equip two classes at a time, they have a lot of passive bonuses. So you can be both a white mage and a black mage at once. You can be somebody that's really going to get in people's faces and tear up their defense, but also then immediately swap over and just start blasting them with magic. By pressing triangle or Y on the Xbox, you can just flip instantly back and forth, utilizing the passives of both of these classes. I think that this is a very fast and very cool ability that honestly doesn't become old. It took me about 30 hours to finish all of the main quests and a lot of the side quests, and by the end of it, I was still very interested in the idea of just bashing and getting the longest combo possible. 
But this brings me to some of the gripes I have with the game. There is a very crazy, over-the-top loot system where whenever you're actually fighting enemies, pretty much every foe you kill is going to drop an item or two or sometimes five items. In just an average quest, a lot of times you're going to find 30 to 50 different items. Armor, gear, add-ons, pieces of clothing, cosmetic upgrades, and basically all of it has tons of different minor stat increases that sadly just don't matter that much. Like, the actual upgrades are good, but the differences between them are so tiny. There is an auto-upgrade button where when you're in the menu, you can just press Equip Best. All you need to do for the entire game is that. Every time you beat a mission, press auto-equip, and you'll have the best gear. There's not really any tiny reason to actually stack attack power or magic bonuses or lightning resistance, because so many enemies in this game are just so breakable and shatterable that a lot of times, as long as you're playing good, you're going to succeed even if you happen to accidentally have bad gear on. But let me talk about why this is a detriment, because there is this weird crafting system inside of the loot. Whenever you actually do not want an item, you can break it down into core components. Now, using this, you can actually upgrade the gear you enjoy the most. But since you're just constantly replacing everything, main weapons, backup weapons, gear, and everything else, since it's just being swapped out instantly every single mission, I literally do not know why anybody would ever actually upgrade a piece of gear. Even if it's rare and heavy armored right now, the next time you go into a dungeon, you're going to find an instant replacement. It makes this weird futility where my characters just kept swapping their equipment so swiftly that I gained no emotional attachment to any of the stuff I'd unlocked. I mean, it felt like just hit it and forget it. Put it on, wear it, and throw it in the garbage can. Which to me, even when I finished a hard quest, I just auto-equip and walk away. But let me talk a bit more about the characters and the story, because this again is something that's kind of felt like a detriment. I said this at the beginning of the video, but this is essentially like basically a retelling of Final Fantasy 1. That's why they're calling it Final Fantasy Origin, but with a lot of extra weird fluff thrown in. Now, parts of this are great. These characters are basically the main unnamed protagonists from the original game from the 1980s, but now they give them actual titles. Their names are stuff like Jack, Neon, Ash, and Jed. But more than that, they gave them actual motivations. In the original game, they kind of just walk around as little 8-bit pixels doing the right thing because they're supposed to do it. Whereas here, they actually have conversations about why they're doing this. Jack says some very cheesy and funny lines at times about, I gotta kill chaos. I'm hungry to kill chaos which is goofy, but I kind of enjoy that. I like the fact that they're trying to add some interesting depth to these characters. They also have some surprisingly good conversations about the concept of if chaos exists. What if slaying chaos doesn't mean killing a bad guy? What if chaos is just a concept? You can't exactly kill an idea. And I think that's really cool, the fact that they're constantly on this quest to kill somebody who may not even really be a physical entity. That is nice. But this does bring me to the downside of it. Honestly, I do not like the fact that there is no overworld. You teleport instantly from dungeon to dungeon, quest to quest. It's just instantly, click it on the world map, and you are there. And because of it, I feel like we do lose a lot of great dialogue. As somebody who's beaten every Final Fantasy, including the original Final Fantasy recently, a lot of the game is doing its world building during that walking. Times where you get a chance to see how the environment exists, battling different creatures on the world map, leveling up by grinding before you get to the dungeon. Stranger of Paradise just feels like obsessively motivated to get you to that next objective. They practically just say, go, 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 don't smell the flowers, don't look around, don't actually just analyze our world, just run to the next dungeon right now at any cost. And to me, I feel like it does cheapen the experience. There's so much about this game that feels disposable. The fact that I can just throw away my gear, and at times it feels like I can throw away a lot of the characters we meet, that does feel like it really thins the excitement. 
But then on the flip side, I just love the combat so much. The battles, the excitement of taking down a boss who almost defeats you. Going online, there's full co-op. Whenever you want, there are these save spheres that work as checkpoints. Whenever you want, you can just say, I'll allow online players and they can just do some instant drop-in co-op. It's interesting that they have these systems, and a lot of times just going in there and leveling up, grinding, and getting a new class feels fantastic. It just feels drugged down, but I realize that I'm not sure if any of this actually matters. I do think it's cool that this game has those main quests. It pays homage to a lot of different Final Fantasies with very direct nods to the entire franchise, which as a fan I appreciate. But more than that, it's cool that there's just hidden side quests. On each of these chapters, after you finish a dungeon, you can choose to just select to go through essentially a remixed version of it, finding extra objectives, extra items, and sometimes some extra crazy experience points. Final Fantasy Origin just has some truly brilliant combats that I feel like I could play for days and days and days without actually getting stale. But at the same time, it does feel like one of those games that once you finish it, once you see the climactic conclusion, you are definitely going to put down the controller and not come back. Okay, so we've heard a lot of good and a little bit of bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Stranger of Paradise a 7 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching this video gamers and I seriously appreciate you leaving a like and subscribing and all that because honestly I super love the entire franchise of Final Fantasy and whether a game is good or whether a game is bad it's always interesting to kind of figure out what the heck is going on. This has been another incredibly great journey but onward to the next review. If you enjoyed this video please interact with it, leave me a comment, tell me what you think but most importantly keep dreaming. And don't forget to kill chaos. I still, I, I died laughing when he's like, I got it. I'm hungry to kill chaos. Who says that? Get a Big Mac. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.